It's Rachel James Terry, and we're here with Mayor Yarber, and he is going to share with us what makes him the young, gifted, and empowered leader of the year. How are you doing, Mayor Yarber? Hey, I'm doing well, Rachel. How are you? I am good. Thank you. Good. The election is over, the smoke is cleared, and educator, councilman, and youth advocate Tony Yarber is named mayor. So, excuse me, at 36 years old. Um, did you ever conceive that you would make history as being the youngest mayor of Jackson, Mississippi? No, no never had a desire to be mayor um, really? of Jackson or, or anywhere else. No, I just, um, you know, when I was a kid, I thought I'd grow up and be a doctor and uh, drive a Ferrari uh, and, and make a lot of money. But I'm the mayor. Yeah. 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 Okay. So is it too soon to decide if you want to break the record for the longest serving mayor of Jackson? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, I have um, no desire to serve past my appointed time. And, and what I mean is that I think that there's a season for this work mm -hmm. and the work that we've got to do in Jackson. I, I understand that um, what we'll be doing in Jackson has a lot to do with uh, changing and impacting the culture. Mm -hmm. You've got to change how people see our city, how we see our city, and then finally we've got to change how we do business in the city. That doesn't happen overnight. Right. Uh, and so the kind of change we're talking about is systemic. And if there's going to be a change in the system, you know, the research says that that takes at least three to five years. So, you know, I'm content with uh, doing it this time. And if uh, the people are pleased with the work product that we produce in the next uh, two years, uh, they'll bring us back for a second term. And I think that that's time enough to be able to really create some uh, long-term um, paradigm shifts and long-term economic uh, power empowerment in our city. Okay. All right. Tell us about your leadership style and how it was developed, and how does it help you to overcome or avert adversity um, that the that this position may bring? Um, I think real leaders make leaders, uh, so there has to be some shared responsibility. I I delegate. Um, I look for people who are young, gifted, and talented. Um, because remember, we've been having this dialogue about legacy throughout right. this entire thing, and I think that it's irresponsible of me uh, to serve my time as mayor and, and, and you know get all this fanfare, but not put other people in a position to be able to carry on the work. Right. It's irresponsible as a leader. My leadership style, I'm high task, high relationship. Um, I think that, that in order for tasks to get done, that it's best done when there's a... Um, a spirit of congeniality um, and cooperation in the room. I think that tasks get get done uh, when people understand what the um, vision is, what the goal is. Uh, so I'm high task. You know, we got work to do. We're yeah. going to get that work done. But I'm also high, high relationship. Let's, yeah. you know, let's have a Christmas party and yeah. and play Dirty Santa. Yeah. You know, um, but after that hour's over, put everything away. Yeah. It's time to get back to work. So. Yeah. Uh, that's my leadership style. I think what it does is it um, helps me balance the challenges of this of this work. And, and you know, I don't call the mayor's job a, a job. I don't. I, I, we talk about it in um, uh, perspective of it being this great work right. that we're doing. Right. And uh, so we balance the challenges of the work. You know, by ensuring that we have a good time and we can have a good time. I encourage my staff to have a good time. I encourage them to fraternize with each other. I encourage them uh, to, to be uh, engaged in community, but I also encourage them to ensure that as we have metrics in place, mm -hmm. that we're measuring our progress over time, that we're looking at uh, those measurements and determine if we're making the progress that we need to make. And if not, we go back to the drawing board. So. Um, we're going to always be data driven. Uh, the data will always speak loud and clear. That's that task part of it, me being high task. Right. Uh, my high relationship is me being able to come and talk to you about the data. Right. And I say to you, Rachel, you know, we set these goals in August, it's December. Yeah. And if, as I look at um, this, this line graph, uh, I don't see this trending upward. Our trajectory is not good. And so we can talk about the data. Right. And, and, we talk about the data, we remember with the mission in the room. Right, right. Your leadership position, you know, can make you appreciate, you know, any moment for relaxation, rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, I understand in your free time you like to write stories and you do, do some spoken word. So, 
Uh, tell us more about that passion that you have. Oh, that's funny. It's uh, funny. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I did not think that you would say something about that. Uh, I do, yeah. I like writing, and I don't necessarily write poems or anything. I just like to write. Uh, um, sometimes I just write in this stream of consciousness, and I just write. And um, uh, normally I write about experiences that I can identify with and, or, or people who I know. Um, every now and then I get to go to Synergy Nights where my girl Miranda J provides an outlet for me to uh, do that. But yeah, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy just writing. I enjoy... I have a motivational gift, mm -hmm. and so God has gifted me to, to motivate. And um, that's one of the ways you do it. That's one of the ways I do it. Okay. I do these things called napkins. Uh -huh. So on Instagram, I'll, uh, I've, we'll be in a restaurant. And I don't know what, what it is about food that just inspires me. <laughs> but we'll be in a restaurant, a Waffle House or somewhere, and, and I just, someone will come to me, I'll grab a napkin, and I'll just write. Uh, okay. A little, uh, some some kind of saying, and I hashtag napkins and hashtag whatever the theme of the napkin is, and I take a picture and post it. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. So go and check out hashtag napkins. <laughs> okay. We'll definitely do yeah. that. All right. Anything else you want to say? You no, know, I'm just humbled, you know, by this. Um, I don't really, you know, I don't think we've done enough work of the work yet that we've seen enough uh, other results. We know we will because mm -hmm. uh, we got a foolproof plan. And so when you, when you hear that you've been, uh, you'll be celebrated with an award like this, it's humbling and it's almost, uh, it almost uh, initiates this immediate nervousness that, golly, we got to get this work done. Yeah. Um, so while I'm, I'm humbled and I appreciate it, it, it also um, impresses upon me the importance of getting this done. So I'm, thank you. I'm grateful. Congratulations, Barry Yarbrough, on receiving the Young, Gifted, and Empowered Leader of the Year. Thank you. You're welcome.